I am really excited about today's video because I'm building Kurt a new gaming system. If you don't know who Kurt is, he's basically the guy whose patience I've slowly been wearing down over the last month of us making gameplay videos together. <laughs> it's actually really funny and we have a great time. The most recent video, we essentially recreated Pirates of the Caribbean, but in Sea of Thieves. So if you want to check that out, I'll have it linked in the description below. Now I have a couple of goals for this build. The first one is considering the fact that Kurt essentially lives in Mount Doom. You know that massive lava spewing mountain that's like the main tourist attraction in Mordor? Uh, yeah, he lives in the bit where they destroyed the ring that time. So it means that the ambient temperature in the room where he games regularly hits like 700 Fahrenheit. I don't know what Fahrenheit is, but it's a fairly big number and it, it's, it sounds really hot to me. So basically what that means is Kurt's gaming system needs to be able to handle pretty high ambient temperatures and still run cool and quiet. So we're going to choose some pretty beefy cooling components for that. And then the second goal that I have for the PC is it needs to be able to handle 1080p gaming slash gaming content creation slash streaming. Now, considering that cutting together 1080p gameplay videos isn't that taxing, we don't need the most powerful CPU ever, uh, but we do want high frame rates and we want a graphics card that can also stream. So I'm going to use an RTX GPU for this build so that we get NVENC and RTX voice and really good just game capture. Um, yeah, so before we get into the parts that we used for the system, let's have a look at the beast that Kurt is working with at the moment. Now this first picture is, um, it's not very promising, uh, but, but let's have a closer look at the inside. Components wise, he's got an AMD FX8350 in here, which is not a terrible CPU. The thing is though, it's renowned for being a very hot CPU, and here he's cooling it with what looks like a baked bean tin with a fan strapped to it. So that's kind of a brave move if you live in Mount Doom. Uh, the graphics card is an AMD RX 580, which is at this point, in my opinion, a bit of a legendary GPU. If you're gaming at 1080p on a budget several years after it being launched, that thing is still a beast. He's got an XFX version of the card, which he's placed in the bottom PCI Express slot. Uh, considering the fact that it's a dual fan card, that's a weird move because the PSU is pretty much blocking one and a half of its fans. So again, I think I know why you struggle with temperatures in your PC, Kurt. When you look a bit closer, the cable management is not ideal, but it does explain why the CPU cable is going kind of where it is. There's a lot of ketchup and mustard, but honestly, my biggest problem with this system at the moment is it's not very clean, Kurt. You really need to give your system some loving. Although, I can imagine that Mount Doom does produce quite a lot of ash, which would be difficult to deal with. Now that we've had a look at the system that Kurt's currently rocking, let's look at the upgrade. Now, I'm pretty excited about all of the components because a lot of them were actually sent out by various manufacturers for this video. Uh, the first one is the motherboard that was sent out by Newegg. I'll have Newegg affiliate links for all of the components in this build in the description below. Now, if you're in the market for a PC at the moment, I would actually go check out Newegg because parts availability is pretty bad at the moment, but I found that Newegg has more stock than like Amazon, for example. Now, the CPU that I'm using for today's build is actually an Intel i7-9700K. If you're buying a PC right now, this isn't the optimum CPU to use in this price range for like productivity uses and stuff like that. Um, I would actually recommend like a 3700X or a 3900X instead, but I had a 9700K lying around and it's still a pretty beast CPU. So yeah, that's why we're using it. Now, when it comes to the GPU, we've got a bit of a thick boy. Galax sent over an RTX 2060 Super one click. As far as RAM goes, I've got 16 gigs of DDR4-3000. It's not the fastest RAM ever, but for Intel, that's fine. And it's more than enough capacity. 
Oh, I actually forgot to mention what the motherboard was that Newegg sent out. Now I asked for an MSI Z390M because it's the nicest Z390 MATX board available. And we're going MATX today because I really love MATX and it's a really nice form factor. And as far as the case goes, I'm gonna use a Fractal Design Meshify C Mini. Now I've used this case in a couple of videos, but it is pretty much one of my favorite cases ever, and it's got really good front airflow for all of that Mount Doom heat that we need to deal with. Now, as far as cooling goes, uh, Scythe actually sent over a Fuma 2, which is like a huge beast cooler that they recently released, and yeah, it's very quiet and very powerful. All of the reviews have been very positive about it, and they also sent over three of their case fans so that we can deck out the Meshify C Mini in Scythe fan bling. Power supply wise, we're using an NZXT C650, which was sent out for a previous video, but I'm gonna use it in this build because it's a pretty dope power supply. So with that, let's put this PC together and see what it has to offer performance and cooling wise. It's no secret, I really love MATX, and I think this build is a good representation of why I love MATX. There's just something so visually balanced about it. There's no wasted space in these cases, and then it means that you can just have a smaller desktop PC that doesn't take up as much space. And I think that's really awesome. Uh, but before we get into more of that kind of stuff, let me just quickly talk you through the building process, which it's a Fractal Design Meshify C. It's a really easy case to build in. The only real issue that I had while building this PC, aside from the fact that I was stupid and forgot to remove the little plastic bit on the contact plate on the CPU cooler. I, I quickly fixed that, but that was a pretty embarrassing mistake. Um, the only real issue I had was with the rear IO shield on the motherboard. Now, this Z390 motherboard, which means it's pretty recent, and it's not even a very cheap Z390 motherboard, doesn't have a built-in rear I.O. shield. And not only does it not have a built-in rear I.O. shield, it doesn't even have one of those nice plushy ones. It's got one of those terrible ones that has the metal prongs that get stuck in ports while you're trying to line things up. I really hate that kind of rear I.O. shield. So now that I've vented about the rear I.O. shield on this motherboard, uh, let's do some quick benchmarks and see how this PC performs when it comes to gaming and whether or not Kurt is gonna have a decent gaming experience on this on this bad boy mm. As far as the gaming performance goes, if you're gaming at 1080p high refresh rate, and that's normal high refresh rate, not 240 hertz high refresh rate, this system 
is it, there's so much headroom. It is really amazing how well this PC performs at 1080p. With most games at high settings, you're getting above 120 frames per second average. It just, it performs super well. And not only that, it's very quiet as well. Now, if you look here, we've got Battlefield 5 running and yeah, I mean, it's it's averaging about 120 frames per second. You don't need more than that, really. And it looks great. It feels really responsive. So yeah, at 1080p, this is an amazing gaming experience. It does get a little bit toasty on the CPU, but again, it's you can't hear it. So you could put up the fan speeds if you wanted to, if it gets a bit hotter, or undervolt the CPU a little bit. The same goes for PUBG. It's performing super well. It's on the snow map here, which I, it's, it's a bit more demanding than a map, but it still runs at about 120 frames per second with decent temperatures. And I think Kurt's gonna be super happy with this quiet little beast. And with that, it brings me to the end of the video and unfortunately, a very somber note. An active member of the Discord called Uncle Berju tragically passed away recently. He played a huge part in rousing the troops to getting the David Does folding team to the 420th position in the world. The way in which he motivated everybody into getting folding was by choosing another YouTuber's folding team to start a friendly rivalry with. And he actually went with Theo Joe's uh, folding team. He posted these hilarious and rousing speeches in the Discord fairly regularly. Because he did say at some point, and I'm quoting him here, he would shit his pants if David posted one of these in a video. So this is for you, Uncle Beju. Breathe deeply, let it out gently. Center yourself for the rigors of our coming crusade. With banners unfurled, we march with the blessing of our emperor, David the Awkward. In his name, we will scour the realms of Theojo free of Cheetos, Code Red Mountain Dew, and evil. In his name, we march. Large, veiny dildos held high above our heads as we charge forth to fight the greatest scourge humanity has ever known, Theojo. <laughs> I pray that if you fall, you take no less than ten of them with you. Your large, veiny dildo will be returned to your family so that the next generation may take up arms in the name of Emperor David the Awkward. Rest in peace, Uncle Bergin.